Now let's take a look at our next instruction, which would be load A with direct addressing. The first thing that you always do when you code up this instruction is think about what does load A direct actually do? Load A means we are going to bring information from the memory system into a register. But direct addressing means the operand is the address of where to get that information. So if I came along and I said, I'm going to do an LDA, I'm going to do an LDA with direct addressing, I need to provide it an address. Let's say, for example, that I give it, that gave it 80. That means it's going to go out to 80 and try to get the information from that. If I looked at this in memory, what I'm going to have is, let's say that I put this at address 2 and 3. I would then look at, say, okay, LDADIR is actually what opcode. Does anybody remember off the top of their head what opcode it is? 87. It's 87. So I would go into memory and I'd see an 87 followed by an opcode of 80. But that's not what I'm going to grab as the ultimate thing that goes into A. What I would then have to have is somewhere down in memory at address 80 would be some information. In this example, this is actually at read-write memory, data memory. So what do you want to put at 80 to read or to grab? Let's put AA. Just because then it's obvious that AA will end up in a register A. All right. I come up to this thing and I say, all right, let's go. I am going to do a fetch. What does a fetch do? A fetch takes three states, and it takes the program counter, which was already pointing at two, because that's where it had to be left by the prior instruction. I am going to take a state in order to take the program counter through this multiplexer to get on the bus one. I will then take this multiplexer and take bus one to put on bus two, and I will then perform a mar load. MAR will now be loaded with the value 2, which will be provided to the address to the memory system and produce the opcode. I then take a state and say, you know what? I need a state to wait for the memory system to respond. Let's go ahead and increment that program counter because then it will be pointing to the next location in memory. So if I started program counter at 2, it will then be pointing to the next location in memory, which is where I want to go get the operand. Okay, now I've given the, the memory system a minute to, to respond, and guess where that operand is going to come out at? It's going to come cruising down, and it's going to show up down here on from memory, and 87 appears. 87 is the, the opcode. So what do I want to do with an opcode? I want to bring it into the memory, or the data path, I want to choose to have it drive bus 2 by changing the bus 2 select lines. And then I want to do an IR load. The IR load is what puts it into the instruction register. Now I take a state and decode it. That gives time for the instruction register to get that information grabbed, pass it back to the control unit, and now I finally know, hey, this is a load A with direct. Direct means I need to put some states in my machine to go get the operand, but I know that it's an address. So I'm going to take that address, and I'm going to put it back on the memory address register. Then I'm going to go read from that address and get the contents and put it into A. So here we go. You notice that when I draw the state diagram, I had already implemented load A with immediate. It sat down here. It had some states over here. Now, I make a decision in my next state logic to go down these paths. And this is going to take a few paths, a few states, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what I need to do is at this moment, I need to go get the operand. Who holds the address of the operand? If you look at our program counter or memory model, it's the program counter. It is tracking where I'm grabbing information out of the program memory. So I come along and say, OK, if I want to get the program counter onto the memory address register, guess what I have to do? I have to do that same example where I say, OK, 
Tell this multiplexer to put the program counter on bus 1. So I change the bus 1 selected program counter. I tell this multiplexer to let bus 1 drive bus 2. So I change its select, select lines using bus 2 select. And then I go ahead and do a MAR load. That MAR load puts 3 into the MAR, the address bus. It goes out to the address. And now I can sit there and wait for the memory system to re respond. I'm going to give it a state to re respond because it won't happen until the next clock edge. I go ahead and increment the program counter in the next state. It becomes 4. What is 4? Why is that important? Program counter is now pointing at address 4. That better be the next location of the next opcode for the next instruction. If it's not, crash. All right. I've waited a minute, and that means that I've given the memory system a chance to respond. And guess who's coming from the memory system? It is going to be 80. That's the address of where I want to go get the information to go into A. This is important. This is an address. Where do we hold addresses if we want to read from them? We take 80, bring it on in, and it's going to come over to here and say, look, I need to get on to bus 2, so I change my bus 2 select. It is now going to be sitting on bus 2. Who do I assert? The memory address <laughs> register. I am actually going to put this into the MAR. So now MAR doesn't, be th doesn't become the next address location in program memory. It actually becomes 8-0. 8-0 now is what goes out on the address bus. And I need a state just to catch my breath. So I actually have a state in here that doesn't do anything to the output signals. It's to give the memory system a minute to respond. It needs a clock edge to produce it. Here it comes. I finally get through state LDADR7, and I come over here. Guess what's coming back from the memory system? It was AA, because that's what we had said that this instruction will do. We had already put this into the read-write memory. We already put AA into 80. So what's going to happen is here comes AA. AA comes over to here. Where is it going to go? I need to bring it into the, the data path by doing bus to select equals from memory. I then need to say, OK, I got AA on bus 2. Where does it go? It goes into A. So I finally do an A load. And guess what? Boom, A gets AA. You know what's awesome about this? I have now gone out to memory. I have grabbed information that was located at address 80. It now resides in register A. And the program counter is pointing to the next instruction in memory. If I look at this from a state diagram or a state waveform, I look at all these transitions. And I watch them go from fetch 0, fetch 1, fetch 2. At the end of fetch 2, the opcode was located in the instruction register. If I then decode and say, oh, LDA DIR456, you know what the whole point of that was? It was to put the address that was residing in the operand onto the memory address register. I went ahead and gave a few states. Once I was ready to do that, AA came out of address 80. And I then did an A load. The instruction is over. And I got AA into register A. That is load A with direct addressing.